Lee Tokar. Hello, every pony. How you doing? Okay, thanks. Thanks, dude. So, hi, everybody. Hi. hi. I wasn't expecting to have so many of you here. This is fantastic. Um, okay, so this is Voice Acting 101. I teach this sometimes, um, and it's been a pleasure to have a lot of great students that have ended up going on to get work in animation. Um, I'm sorry about the glasses. I'm, I'm very light sensitive, and I, so I just, just deal with it. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, man! <laughs> oh, that's perfect. No, not. And it is. So I don't want to be back there. I'll just... So how many people want to be in voice acting? Look at all these future voice talents. Uh, how many people have done some voice work in the past? A couple of you. How many of you, how many have it paid? Like paid gigs? No, that's not, it's okay, that's okay. That's what, that's what you're here to learn. So, okay, first things first. Uh, you need to get a demo reel because that is your first audition. It's your first foot in the door. It's how you get an agent. It's how you get into the union. It's how you, you get your first gig, really. So in my classes, I teach one class a week for a month, every other month, for uh, something called on the mic training for Michael Dangerfield. It's his class and I just come in, he's got people that come in and teach commercials and teach narration and I'm the person that's done yeah, so much animation. As, as he said, uh, um, Dude Brony said that I uh, have been and I have been in over 6,000 episodes of animation. Uh, to, to let you know where you're getting your information from right now, this isn't me being, being braggy pants, but it'll help you feel confident that you're getting the information from somebody who actually does do good work. I'm in seven shows right now. Um, Endangered Species, which is the new um, Nerdcore and uh, Disney production. Max Steel, I'm in that. Um, I'm in a couple things that I'm not allowed to tell you because I'm signed away on non-disclosure agreements and they will hunt me down and kill me. Um, Johnny Test is coming back for season six and I play, I play bling, or season seven, and I play bling bling boy on that and the general and Speed McCool. Hey, I like your monkey. <laughs> and um, Albert, the uh, butler, and Mortimer Mouse, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And I was George of the Jungle, and Yakety Yak, and on and on and on. And Anyway, so you're getting your information from somebody who is an actual working actor, so you can trust me when I tell you the information I'm about to disseminate to you. So, first, get the demo reel, because that's your first audition, it's your first foot in the door. Here is... Anyway, <laughs> somebody's sending me racy pictures. <laughs> no, not that racy. It's PG. It's PG. It's actually, there's, it's a picture of, oh, well, so I'll show you later. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really ridiculous. Um, it's basically, basically, it's a Renaissance fart joke. Um, okay, that's all, I, that's all I can say. Uh, okay, so... You get your demo reel, it should be, how many, if you can remember all this information, I'm gonna be pouring my head out to you, okay? So if you have pens and papers, you could take them out, because this is kind of a class. Uh, your demo reel should be no longer than two minutes, about a minute, minute and a half. It should consist of uh, at least four of your voices that show a range, unless you do just one voice very well then highlight that voice. Make it sound like a cartoon, because it is cartoon, it's an animation that you're trying to get into, right? So make it sound like a, a bit of animation, about a minute, minute and a half, two minutes maximum. Uh, you have 10 seconds off the top to wow the listener, to wow the casting agents, because that's where you're gonna be taking it and to your agents. So that means you have production value. Make it sound like a cartoon or an old-fashioned radio play. Put a little production in it, like make some sound effects. Basically, I do all of my stuff. I'm not fancy. 
I got garage band and I got great microphones. I spend all my money on microphones. I don't need to spend a lot of money on, on fancy, you know, pro tools or anything like that. So I'm going to give you the, the rough and dirty, trying to get the easiest way, cheapest way to get in. Um, so you got your demo reel and it, and it has, uh, but make it, set it in a, in a situation where all your characters can interact, like a doctor's office or an elevator or someplace, someplace silly or some, you know, make it, make it funny. Do the writing, make it funny. Um, help each other. I have some of my students that aren't very good writers. I say, well, send it out to your, to your people and work on it together and they'll, they'll help you. Um, make it sound good. Uh, put some music bed on there, but don't make the music or the production overpower the sound of your voice. The voice is the most important thing, okay? So if you could do like four or five characters and have them interact, fantastic. Uh, then what, at the end you say, hi, my, I use your name, obviously. Hang on a second. <laughs> um, I have a ridiculous group of friends. Um, uh, um, and they, they know I'm doing this right now and they're trying to crack me up in front of you. So. <laughs> they're mean. Um, anyway, so at the end, what I do, and I tell all my kids, I say, uh, hi, my name is Lee Toker. This is a small example of some of my voices and I can be reached at, and then give your number. This will change eventually. So this is your first demo tape. Your first demo tape, what's a tape? I catch myself on that all the time, really. Yes, your demo reel, yes. This is your first demo eight-track tape. Uh, um, yes, demo, yes, exactly. A demo mixtape. <laughs> Funny. Um, that would be kind of old school if you, like, gave out a cassette. So, and, and, the, and then the casting is like, what, what is this? Like, oh, yeah, all the kids are doing it, man. I, uh, you're so uncool. What? what? Whatever. Whatevs. <laughs> an actual record that'd be awesome that's old school that stuff right there oh yeah here's my vinyl uh, anyway now why you're going to change it later is because you're not just because you're going to get better but because once you're going to use this to get an agent so you send this out as, as an mp3 to go and find the agents in your area the ones that are reputable, go online and source them. Do some due diligence. Find out how, if they got a good reputation. Never take an agent that wants to take your money because they didn't do anything for you yet. And they shouldn't. The only time they should take money is 15% off of your money that you made off of your gigs. And that's it. So if they say, oh, there's a one-time uh, entrance fee of $100 to put you on our roster, they are Cheating and mean, spirited, evil. Do not. Sh they are. They are the flim and the flam. So. <laughs> okay. So once you get that, so you you send out the MP3 and then you cold call them. You say, "May I? Uh, I'm interested in getting into voiceovers. Can I? Can I send out my MP3? I've worked on this little thing. It's really kind of a dream, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Be polite, right? And then call them back in a week and say, "Have you? I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, budge. But uh, have you? Have you had a chance to maybe listen uh, to the tape, to the reel? <laughs> I'm, I'm so old. Oh, I'm so old." I'm so old. I'm so old. I look great for 72, though, right? <laughs> I uh, moisturize. <laughs> uh, I use oil of no way. <laughs> yes. Uh, so once you get... Hold on. Okay, that's just weird. Uh... <laughs> My friends are so evil. Uh, okay, uh, so once you get the agent and they say, yeah, I, I, I've listened to you, uh, to, the, to, the, to your demo, I like it, I'm gonna represent you. Well, maybe they'll take you on for a trial for six months or something like that. Then you go back and re-record it with their number at the end. Hi, my name is Lee Toker and I could be, re this is a small example of some of my voices and I could be reached at and then cut in their, uh, their phone number. They are, your, they are in cahoots with you, your agent. Find somebody that works with you. They are the ones that get you the gigs, that get you the casting agents and all that stuff and get you the auditions. Now we come to, so I'm running through all of this. I hope you're getting it all. Uh, now we come to your audition. Leave your inhibitions at the door. I really mean this. First of all, hang on a second. Who's not following me on Twitter? 
by a show of hands? I'm not going to say another word until you follow me on Twitter. Every single one. <laughs> it's Lee Tokar. Follow me on Twitter. I'm very, very entertaining. <laughs> I'm Amish. I don't know. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Sorry. I, I understand. Uh, no, it's, it's just. It, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a series of tubes. <laughs> We've learned this. Okay, so now let's move on to the audition process because I want to get this into your heads because I feel like there is a lot of people making a lot of money charging people for this information, which I think is, is kind of, it's too, it, they're charging too much. And I don't think that's fair. Uh, so I'm going to sort of make all of them collectively really peeved at me right now. So, um, uh, so audition, you come in, be polite. You've, you've read your script and now you have, the, they're called sides. So you get the sides from your agent, you rehearse, try and be off book. Voiceover people, I, I'm going to let you in on something. We're really lazy. We're very, very lazy because we have the sides right in front of us. The sides are a breakdown of the character and what they are and what they're saying. So they're right in front of us, so we don't need to be off book, but I am off book because I want to be better because I want to be in 6,000 more cartoons. So um, I go in and I always have two voices prepared because they'll always, so even on the sides, they'll say, oh, th we want this uh, character to be Scottish, so you know, I'm practicing my Scottish all night long, you know, and I'm, I'm really getting into it and I'm really, like, I'm immersed. I'm watching Braveheart. I'm really, I'm into it. I'm, I'm eating haggis in a kilt, you know. I'm, I'm walking around half drunk, you know. I'm like screaming at people and waving a sword in the street, you know. And then I get in there and they say, oh, actually, it's going to be French. Can you do, and it's like, oh, oh, it's, fr uh, oh, 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 uh, hold on a second, wait. Okay, let's see, so it's French, okay, that's so very good, I can do that too, okay. So be, have two things prepared or three, make it your best stuff. Um, know your microphone technique. The microphone usually be pointing down, angle your mouth about 45 degrees down this way so you don't pop your peas or wind and sibilance and all that stuff. So there, and uh, be polite. They will ask you to slate. How many people know what a slate is? A slate, when they ask you to slate, very good, uh, is when you slate your name. Say, uh, my name is Lee Toker and I'd be reading for the part of the now French Scotsman. <laughs> so, and, and then you begin. And then, to, and then after you say that, that's the slate, so they know who you are and they have it on, on, on uh, tape. <laughs> And then you take a nice breath in. Don't be nervous. Nerves lose jobs. There is a, an invisible line between the door coming into the studio and this microphone. And it's, it's, you can't see it, but there's piles of money on that trail. And if you come in and you're nervous, all that money just blows out the door. It <laughs> blows all away. So. Don't be nervous, be polite, say thank you, take direction well. When you're done, uh, if they say, well, and if you have something else you can say, actually, I did prepare something else if it would be okay. And you've got to, and here, I'm gonna give this as my best advice that I've ever come up with. I wish I could patent it. It's sort of a life lesson. Um, these casting directors have been sitting there for days sometimes, listening to the same words coming out of hundreds of mouths. They're bored. They want something new and something fresh. That's a lot of pressure for you. It's a lot of pressure to feel like you're special to them. When I was a teenager, uh, many years ago, <laughs> back when that mountain was a little to the left, <laughs> um, I spent some time studying philosophies and the religions of the world, and I, I spent a, a couple months in a deprivation tank. Uh, not like, uh, not for months. They, I, I came out every once in a while. Yes, I, I came out half the size and looked shaped like a prune. That was a prune. Um, but uh, uh, when I first got in there, it was like this big egg and, and with, with warm water in it, body temperature water and lots of salt, so you're floating in there. And they closed the door and it's, dark and I got scared and I, I jumped out 
And the lady that was running this clinic, she said, it is impossible for the body to be scared and relaxed at the same time. Taking that philosophy, when you're in an audition, do what you do to give an experience to the casting director. Do out of love. Give them an experience. Make them laugh as a human being. Draw them in and give them an experience of laughter or, you know, something that's positive that you're doing for them because you can't, that's a sense of giving and sharing and loving. You can't be afraid while you're loving. You can't. That's my philosophy. Anyway. Um, so that is the best advice I could think of. So do out of love and experience, give them an experience. That's your job to make them happy for that moment. And then you're going to get the job. And then you get your agents to take 15% and then you join the union. And, and you'll probably, if you get the job, you have to probably, I recommend joining a union, uh, always SAG or here at SAG. Uh, it's Union of BC Performers or ACTRA in Canada. I don't know what it is in other countries. Woo hey, how many Canadians are here? My people, how's it going, eh? Nice, nice, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> how's it going, eh? Um, right, so, uh, so there you go. Now, you have the audition, you've got the agent, you're in a union. Now you want to build your repertoire. Let's see what we're doing for time here. Okay, we're doing great, we're doing great. Uh, now you want to build your repertoire. Listen, listen, listen to everything. Listen to dialects. How many people do other dialects? Great, that's amazing. How many people do them well? Aha, uh -huh, cocky guy in the front, I love it. That's great, buddy, and he's taking notes too. This is this one, he's watching out for him. Take my jobs from me. Um, so uh, it's good to, it's good to listen. Like uh, I, every year, I expand my repertoire by two voices, by two dialects. Um, a couple years ago, uh, I learned um, North Devonshire, and I did that by studying, uh, by listening to Anton Lesser reading David Copperfield. So, said, Master Copperfield, Master Copperfield, you're welcome, sir. You'll find us rough, sir, but you'll find us ready. You know, they all talk like this, got a bit of a laid back sort of thing going on there. And, and it took months, and I will not bust out a vo an accent until I am completely, I, until I sound like a native from that place. Last year was Welsh, uh, and uh, that was hard. Uh, or, yeah, the beginning of last year. And it, it, to me, it sounds like East Indian. I'm, it's, uh, it, I don't know how, why, but it has that sort of up and down thing, you know. And East Indians have the same sort of thing, you know. So it's, it's like, and I learned it from listening to, uh, and this is, this is your study. You study every, you know, every year you study, do, do something new. I studied uh, Dylan Thomas's A Child's Christmas in Wales. And uh, it's like, one Christmas was so much like another. In those years around the sea town corner now. And out of all sound, except the distant speaking of voices, I sometimes hear a moment before sleep that I can never remember whether it snowed for six days and six nights when I was 12, or whether it snowed for 12 days and 12 nights when I was six. And I just kept learning all these things. So you study and you learn, you choir. Next year, I'm going to learn Liverpudlian because I don't know how to do that one properly. Uh, but the last one I did last year was the hardest accent I have ever learned, South African. Oh my gosh, it was hard. Because I started by learning Dutch. And, uh, you know, when they went to Holland, I ate a lot of cheese and drank a lot of beer. Yeah. And then I realized that's totally wrong. And so I studied like Australian a little bit. No, I studied doing that. And that was wrong. I just had to immerse myself. And there's, uh, there were very few South Africans around where I was living. So it, it, but it took six months. But I realized it's very clipped. Uh, all these things they say, they're very clipped like this. Uh, and they also said, like, they're sort of up to something as well, you know. Like, they don't just ask you for the time. They say, hey, if I was to ask you what time it is, would you tell me, eh? <laughs> you know, it's, and, and I watched Blood Diamond. I was really impressed with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, what's his name there? Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, so, so steal, steal, steal from other people. Learn, learn, learn. Put it in your head. All of us A-level actors in, a, in, in Vancouver, we steal from each other like just like vultures. 
you know, waiting for somebody to put a new voice and like, take that one over there and stuff it in my little bag of tricks. Um, so make yourself better all the time. Now, how do you come up with more voices? Well, I'm, I'm working on an app for that uh, and it's coming out, but it's a, it's, it involves uh, us, uh, wheels. So first you have in the center of the wheel, it's like a bullseye. So you have in the center, you have, are you male or are you female? Then you, the second one are that you spin like a color wheel. Are you young, old, teen? You know, what, 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 what's your age? Uh, so you're, what's, your, what's your gender? What's your age? What's your archetype? Are you a hero? Are you a villain? Are you a thing? And another level is, are you a horse? Do you do, <laughs> are you a pony? <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, are you, uh, are you a seagull? You know what, it depends. And that will change what you're gonna do. Sprinkle, sprinkle, yeah, exactly. Sprinkle some of those things onto the voice when you're doing auditions. So I know this is kind of an abridged class. Are you guys enjoying it so far? Is this, yes, yes, okay. I'm really, I'm really making a lot of, a lot of teachers very mad at me right now. So, um, nah, screw them. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so yeah, find your own, uh, your own thing. And, and what, are you angry all the time? Are you nervous all the time? Do you have a little facial tic? You know, do you, what, what's, your, what's your quirk? Uh, do, do you, are you narcoleptic? Do you fall asleep in the middle of sentences? Do you have narcolepsy and Tourette's? Do you wake up and fall asleep and then wake up and swear? You know, <laughs> that would be funny actually. <laughs> 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 that would be very. <clears throat> I'm gonna write that down. Um, so okay, so you've got now you have the demo reel done. You've got the agent. You're in a union. You've got your first gigs. Now you're gonna promote, promote, promote. Oh wait, the last part of what to do when you have those voices. How how do you remember them? Because you'll be asked to do them at the drop of the hat. So find a catchphrase. You know, like, I'm never going to be asked to do March Simpson. I keep, I keep saying this, but if you have a, but I have a catchphrase, like, oh, I can't, my voice is so trash. Like, oh, no, me, there's something about this severed monkey paw that just doesn't settle with me. <laughs> so, so. And, and that's the phrase I use to drop immediately into March Simpson, which I'm never going to get the role to play. But I, every character that I have, I have a little catchphrase. And that's how I get to that place in my head because there's a lot of things in my head. <laughs> and I get a little um, it's Voice actors are mainly crazy. It's, and we're just allowed to be, we're just not locked up at some place. We're just locked up in a room together with microphones. <laughs> yes, that's right, exactly. Sometimes I totally forget and I leave, my, I leave home without my filter and I just like um, Yeah, again, uh, uh, sort of a controlled Tourette's, I think. <laughs> so, uh, okay, you got the agent, you got the demo reel, you're in the union, you've got the audition, you know how to audition, you're very polite, you've, you've, you're off book, you've got two or three voices, you've got the gig, you get the gig, and make sure you don't put anything on your demo reel and don't do anything in your audition that you can't maintain for at least 12 episodes, 13 episodes, 52 episodes. Why? I'll tell you. Because I was there the day that somebody... Uh, did an audition with a voice, and then we were, everybody was cast, and two shows in, the director realized they only studied those lines. They have no idea how to maintain that character. He was fired, never worked again, and it will ruin your reputation because they've got to recast, we're talking money, and every time you're taking money out of a producer's pocket, they remember you, and they will never forget you <laughs> until you are absolutely forgotten. So... It's, you got to be very careful with that. Whew, well, I'm really dumping my head out there, aren't I? <laughs> uh, what else? Okay, let's see what we're doing for time. I'm doing good. We're doing good. Everybody? It's okay. Everybody? Fine. Fine. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we're going to, I want to throw it open to questions in a little bit, but I'll see if there's anything else I can think of. Um, the only thing after that is just basically shameless self-promotion. That is very important. You and your agent, somebody say Tabitha? Tabitha. <laughs> She's amazing. Well, you know, but, well the, the, the reason why it's so important is because you are no longer, if you are an, a working actor, you're no longer just a person, you are a brand. 
That's what you have to think of yourself as. What is my brand? Like, I'm kind of the crazy weird guy, so I can shave my head every once in a while. And I'm a voice actor, no one cares what I look like anyway. Um, but what's your brand? Uh, what's, what are you known for? What's the voice qualities that they look for? So the casting directors, they'll know you and they'll say, oh, I remember that voice. Yeah, he, he does that sort of, that really high squeaky voice or he's got that really low sort of truck ad. Built for death in a world across space, one man. Something, you know, the, 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 I, actually, I actually studied under Don LaFontaine, God rest him, before he passed away. Yeah, he was a great man. He was a great man. Yeah, the voice of every movie ever made. <laughs> yeah. He, he was the original in a world. He was that guy. So it was amazing. Um, okay, so what's your brand? So get a website. Get some cards made. Um, get, uh, put your, uh, put your, your reel on a, de on a stick and hand those out. Your agent and you should, should uh, blanket whatever town you live, live in with your, your MP3s and all the production companies, all the places that make cartoons, all the, pl the places that, like all the sound places that do commercials because some commercials aren't just like in a world, you know, it's like, uh, you know, or built for tough. It's not just that, it's like, you know, this week, this week at the Bay, it's not like that. It's, it's, uh, there are voices, like they, so a lot of commercials now have, are, have a cartoony quality to them. So if you're known as that character-y kind of cartoony voice, you'll get that. You can get those jobs too. So blanket your town, you and your agent, wh whom you're in cahoots with. I think I just wanted to say that word again, cahoots. Who says cahoots? A Canadian says cahoots. Ah, he's totally in cahoots, eh? <laughs> it's a great word, cahoots. Um, I'm gonna enjoy that. Uh, I know, right? Eh? I know. I, I, she got East Coaster now, eh? Party on the barge, eh? Party on the barge with Marge, yeah? Yeah, what boy? <laughs> yeah, right. Look at him. <laughs> um, so, okay, let's see. What are we doing here? Okay, it's. You don't really require them. That's more of an on-camera thing. You can do them, and I, and it is kind of a if you want if you're going to do a CD, which not a lot of people are doing, but it is something that you can do. Then you can have a nice photo taken of you and put it on the front and make and make a production out of it. If you're going to do a CD, don't just like slap something together. Everybody can make it. Everybody has CD makers now, but this is it. Just seems like archaic te te arcane technology to me now. It's just. It's pretty old school. I, I am MP3 guy. I do everything through emails, and it's just why 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 make more plastic? It's like it's waste. There's like a Texas size ball of mush and plastic floating around in our ocean. We don't need any more of that. Um, sorry, I'm just getting down off my soapbox here. Okay, <laughs> uh, right. So websites are good. Websites are great. If you know somebody who can help develop or if you can do it, it doesn't have to be much, just like a simple WordPress site. There, you can, there's, there's programs and apps that you can make your own. Everybody knows somebody who knows somebody who designs websites. So it doesn't have to cost a lot of money either. Um, now, uh, one other thing that I wanted to tell you about. So, so you've got, you got the website, you're cross-promoting. Uh, hit, the, hit the circle of four or whatever, five. So you got your Twitter. So you're always talking about what you're doing or you're, if you're auditioning. You're on Facebook and you're uploading your, your thing. So Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Reddit. Uh, hit all of the, hit all of it, hit all of it. Uh, you, can, you can get your first jobs by going to voices.com or voice123 or voice bunny. You upload your demo for an annual fee and they will, uh, and then you write down all of the things that you think that your your voice are that you can do. Are you do you do a good old man? Not like do you do old men, but do you do or do you do an old man voice? <laughs> you know, um, but you know what I mean. And so you can have all. Do you do German? Are you do Japanese? Like, do you speak any other languages? Like I speak a bit of Japanese and a bit of French, a bit of uh, lots of not anything very well, which is bad, but enough to get me around. Mama, doesn't it? Uh, Okay. So, and then they will send you every day a list of auditions with sides. 
and that are sent in from producers asking for those types of reads. You can get hundreds a day. You could be in your studio literally for hours knocking off at, uh, these auditions and then sent, uploading your MP3 to that, to that site and to that file. And then they will have it there and then the, the uh, producers at the other end will listen to it and pick you out of hundreds of other people. It's really hard, don't be discouraged if you don't get your jobs right away because it, there's a lot of people out there. I got, when, when I got, I bought a whisper room, I had it flown in from Tallahassee, and, uh, and I built it, and it was a beautiful little whisper room on, on, on uh, um, casters, so I didn't get any road noise or anything like that, and it's a little room, it's padded, <laughs> my little padded room, and <laughs> that could be crazy, my little padded room, but I have a microphone, so it's okay. Um, uh, so then, uh, I was in this thing and it cost me 5,000 bucks. So I was like, okay, I am going to work my bum off until I pay off this 5,000 freaking dollars. I, was gonna, I made a point of it. So every day I was up at 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning because I'm on Vancouver and the people in New York are already up and they're already auditioning. And sometimes they'll max out at, the, at like 20 people or they'll just say, oh, that's the voice. And usually they'll go with the one, that, and, they, and they always have a low ball price, like 100 bucks or 200 bucks. It's non-union work. But as long as it's not in your region, it's okay to do that. Because you need, in the, initially you need to get things on your CV, on your resume. You need those jobs. Those jobs are your, that, that tells your next job that you're good enough. So, voices.com, voice123, voice bunny. You go to them, you try and get your gigs, you, know, you land a gig or two, you put it, you put it on, a, on your, another reel, and then you have that that you keep track of, and keep updating your CV, and keep uploading, and as soon as you start getting some, create an IMDB account, because that's important, I, Internet Movie Database. It's what people, it's what other producers are gonna go to to find out about you. And um, I have yet to, only once have I ever cracked below 20,000. I'm so mad, I was close for one day. Ah, yeah, never mind. Anyway. <laughs> um, but anyway, so there it is. Now, let me tell you the one last thing before we throw this open. The best thing that you can do in the beginning, how many people were sat at the panel with uh, this morning, with just a couple hours ago, okay, where we were talking about um, what's important, and I said, what's important is listening to the sound of your voice. And you can do that by creating a little sound room for yourself in your, in your house. You can do it in a closet where there's baffle, where you, the, the clothes sort of take away that bounce that you hear, that, that room sound. You could do it simply, here, let me show you a cutest little microphone. Oops, sorry. Hang on. Save it for winter. Okay. See if I got here. See if I got here. Just one moment, please. Got my bag of implements of destruction. So. Um, oh, I can't get it. Okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, so the glass is on. Um, so, uh, so you get. Sometimes, and it has a little thing, and it goes 
goes from here into here. And it also works on your iPad. And then you get GarageBand, and you download the GarageBand app, and boom, you're editing auditions on the fly for the cost of this and this. But you can also just use this. Or you can, you know, and you know, you can do anything to cancel out room sound. So there it is, my new young pupils. My my voice over the cycles as it were. Building your young minds, <laughs> creating an army. Now, um, I went, now, how many people know a little bit about what I'm doing behind the scenes with my fan built thing? Okay. We're just, I, I keep saying we're, gonna, we're ready to launch, ready to launch. Okay, well, this, the, uh, we are actually, we're live right now, as of this week. Yeah. We've had some glitches. We've had, we, have about, we had 30. We now have about 50 beta testers that went in, and I said, okay, just try and wreck it. And then they wrecked it. So I was like, okay, that's what I asked them to do. We actually, they hacked us. They destroyed this. I was like, that's amazing. That's, thank you for destroying everything. I've done. But it's what we wanted. It's what we needed to do. Then we did, there was some scalability, so we switched over to Amazon. We're very excited. It brings people together, not just to make animation together. Writers to, can, can upload scripts uh, and then likes and dislikes you know they get heads dispensed then voice actors can come and take those and and make some fun something funny and then somebody that can come and make other things on top of that put some music to it and stuff like that or make a little animatic or you know or you could draw a picture someone draws a picture of a, of a window and and you know and then somebody can come in and make shower sounds like you're singing la, 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 dee, 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 and then boom, it's like a single picture but it's a production now so all these things but we're not we've decided we're gonna we also have young movie makers that because they all my I have painter friends that paint and carve stones, and they're like, well, I'm not going to your site. I'm like, how come? I got this thing I've been making. They're like, but because I'm not an animator, so whatever, I paint pictures. So we're, we've opened it up to every, every kind of discipline. The only ones that we haven't figured out how to include are mimes and, uh, and choreographers and people who choreograph mimes. That's the only, but other, other than that, I everybody else, so it's a free for all. But what I'm saying, why I'm saying this to you is, I have a group of six producers that are going to help me how to, how to design this so it's, it's specific to producers looking for people who want jobs. And, and, and that they, want produ they have productions that want to hear your voices. So go in, create a profile, upload your demo reel, even if it's silly, or upload your pictures. It's like, it's like DeviantArt, but for all disciplines. It's like Facebook, but only for creators. We want people that only make stuff. And it's like YouTube, but not just pictures of silly people doing cat stuff. Like it's not just, oh, look at this funny thing my cat did. It has to be a little production. And it's gotta have a beginning and an end and put your name on it, be proud, because everything in our Vimeo account is gonna cycle and we're working on creating the fan built network. So we're, we have a, original coding right now that's gonna just keep pulling from all the wonderful things that you do and just keep cycling it. So um, we're very excited and there's other big announcements for that, but here's a place where you can go if you have no experience for other people to hear you. It's called fanbuilt.com, F-A-N-B-U-I-L-T.com. So right now we're having a hard time connecting the front to the back, but it is live and if, you, if you're having a hard time logging in, it's because they're still having trouble, so go to fanbuilt.com forward slash studio and then you'll get to the back end, you can create your account. Uh, and there's a su suggestion box and if you wanna get a hold of me, I'm, I can't believe I'm not telling you this, but it's okay, because it's fanbuilt. Uh, Lee at fanbuilt.com is my email and tell me that there's problems or ask me questions because I'm available because I, this is what I do, and I like to teach people. Just, just not, not too many, though. Not, not too many. Like, I only see my 67th email to you. I can't believe you're not responding. <laughs> it's because you're crazy. <laughs> um, just a little bit. Well, we're, it's, well we've got to do something to keep warm, eh? <laughs> you got to pace back and forth and be nervous. It's like, it's like, it's, what are, you, are you crazy? Nope, just keep them warm. <laughs> so uh okay so can we i'll open the floor open to anybody that wants to uh that wants to ask any any particular questions hey what we're gonna do is we're gonna have people line up around here oh. and we'll do it that way okay that sounds that sounds fantastic but i get to go first I, you get to go first <laughs> i don't know so where's the you get to the front and i'll show you exactly where it starts okay and i'll stand over here 
All right, it's going to start right here, so line up against that wall. Now I just got to fight for who's first. Oh, yeah. Oh, good to see you, Dusty Cat! Woohoo! All right, so I have dibs on first question. Okay, with the first question. On a scale of one to ten, how awesome is DronCon? Oh, fantastic. Ten. Ten, right? Right, right? you should all ten. go. DronCon, awesome. Ding, ding, ding. All right, come on up. Uh, it's general animation, John Con. That's Hi. one line. I'm Sean. Hi. What's your name? Sean. Hi, Sean. How are you, buddy? Good. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple of questions regarding uh, the what Voice One Two Three, I guess it is, and those websites. Yep. Um, first question. Um, for though, I know you said for like for agents stuff, you need like a demo for auditions for these websites. Do you need like a certain demo, or you just do like a demo of you? You can just do a lines? demo of yourself and upload it. Anything you feel conf confident with. But again. Remember that your first demo reel is your first audition, and so make it good whether it's going to go to an agency or Voice123 or Voice.com or Voice Bunny. Always okay. be, always be your, on your A game, for sure. Okay. And um, for those kind of auditions, like for the Voice123, do you need like a really, how high quality microphone should you get? Is it studio you should, quality or like? You should probably try and make it as good quality as you can, but I mean, there's, there's so many great apps out there that already sound great that you're, you're going to be hard pressed to find something that doesn't make your voice sound pretty good. Right. Like the, the record quality should be pretty good at, at anything you use. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, like what your was bunny your... ears. <laughs> I'm Angel. Oh, hi Angel. Um, <laughs> what was your first audition like? Uh, it was scary. Oh, actually, it was for, actually the first audition that I ever had uh, really hurt my throat because it was for Bobcat Goldthwaite's voice. <laughs> I was like, ah, I just, no, I'm not sure what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, and, and I, I had to practice that for a week before. And I was living in Kelowna, and I would travel on a bus to Vancouver for auditions. But it was really scary, and I was nervous as heck. But uh, the director liked what I did, and he, call, he, call, he kept calling me back. So I'd have to save up my money while I was still living at home to take a bus to go back to Vancouver. But yeah, it was, it was terrifying. So, Thank you. Yes, bye. All right, real quick, I need to make an announcement for people in the back. Uh, AV is yelling at me, saying you're being a little loud, so just tune it down a little bit. Thanks, guys. All right. My question is, um, usually you have voice actors when they, they, they when, during production, they either voice pack alone or usually with the, the other voice actors. Which yeah. one's usually better, like being with the voice actor? Because you can just feed off of each other while you're there yeah, together. I, yeah, I prefer to be acting with my fellow actors. Because when you see like the like, DreamWorks do like the bigger cartoons, they always have them doing alone. I'm like, how much better would it be if they had them all together? Well, in a bigger in a bigger scenarios and bigger movies, usually it's hard to wrangle all of the talent. Like yeah. Morgan Freeman, if he's in it, he's off doing something. <laughs> you know, Tom. Tom Hanks is out filming something somewhere across the world, and if they're on the same show, they have to record them at different times. In ADR, audio dialogue replacement, which is a lot of anime, you're always alone, because you're, you're, you're mouthing, fitting the flaps in another language, reading the page, looking at the time code, fitting, matching that, putting it into the mouth flaps. Um, so that's when you work alone, but prelay, which is what I do a lot of, is where you have the whole cast, and that's, like, that's the fun stuff, because then you, you're right, you do feed off each other. It makes it just better. Yeah. And also, I just want one more thing. Uh, do, usually, a lot of these types of careers usually transition to other ones, similar ones. I hear a lot, like Michelle Kreber said earlier, like she's theater is great. What other ones are usually good, like usually feeding each other are pretty good for voice acting besides theater? To, to, to springboard from voice to something else? Well, not so much a springboard, usually, but usually it, people usually just go the other way around. Another. Like, because. Uh, You'll hear like great actors. They'll they'll be acting for so long, and then they'll just go right back to theater or Broadway, and they'll just stay there. 
Yeah, I mean, I did stand-up comedy for 15 years. <laughs> so that's how, I, that's how I, I got into it. I had a strange feeling you did stand-up. Yeah, I did stand-up and comedy. That process, and that was I scary. Hear, how, that, how bad are... Did, did you hear, like, had bad nights where bits just didn't... Oh, go, they just my didn't God. Stick? I had the worst <laughs> night of my life at the, at the Okanagan... Better Business Bureau <laughs> banquet, and they and I and, they, and I was at this little podium, and the little microphone just went, and, was, and I'm like, and I had to lean out. So hey, uh, what about that yeah, airplane food or whatever? I don't know. And, and, uh, and they're eating. They're eating. You can't fight prime rib. You can't fight prime rib. And they never. I let's tell them my jokes. It's ha. Ah, crickets and wind. And it was just like oh deflation. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Thanks very much. Oh, oh, thanks for the question. Can I hold it? Nah, if you yell at me. Okay. Hi, I'm <gasps> I'm Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. How Hi. are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I am great. I don't know. Great. How am I? Am I okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, I'm an acting major right now um, in Texas, uh, <laughs> okay. and I was I was just wondering. So. When you go in to get a gig, and a lot of work is union work. I, it, Voice, is it, like, most of it SAG-AFTRA? Is there a different union for voice actors? No, or? it's the same, it's the same, there's a different department in each agency, but it's exactly the same union. Okay. Yeah. And, um, so, I have a lot of friends, you know, they have on-screen, you know, they have film agents, and so that can all, you know, your agent can, can get you gigs in film, in the studio, with voice acting, is it, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, well, you're, there, there's, again, there's two different kinds of agents. Uh, usually an agent that handles uh, film and TV does not handle the contracts for, for voice because they are so specific, right. that they're, they're particulate to uh, the genre of, of voice acting. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there will be a department usually in, a, in an agency where they will handle you specifically and they'll coordinate with your on-camera agent to say, okay, okay. Uh, uh, it was Vanessa, right? Yeah. Yeah, Vanessa's got a gig on Wednesday between 9 and noon. Can, uh, uh, and, and then say, oh, well, I had, actually, I had an audition for her at that time. Can we move it? And then so, so, so that's it's two, two different agents. agents. Two different agents. I have, I have five agents. Okay. So five different ones for five different things that I do. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even think I did five things. <laughs> Who knew? Anyway, thank you, Vanessa. Awesome, yeah. And all the best in your career. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my question would be, um, how young can you be at the, like, how young can you be to start voice acting? Any age or? Yeah, um, as long as you can read. Uh, oh. Well, that's it. I mean, if you can read, there's been really, really young kids that have, that have started really young. I, I was, Andrew Francis is one of the, I knew him like little Andrew. I knew little Andrew. He was in a, we did, we did Book of Virtues together. I played Ari the Groundhog and he played something else. And then like two years later, um, he couldn't get those little boy roles anymore because, well, they, they, they dropped. So, so <laughs> putting it delicately. But I've watched him at, at, since a young age, and there's lots of young kids. And, and, and sometimes um, they, will they will have a, a speech impediment, a sort of a, a lateral lisp or something like that, and the parents get really freaked out, and they're like, they go to speech therapy and correct it, and then the kid isn't working anymore. And then it's like, oh, but we like the lisp. We like that thing that he did. What are you doing? You're wrecking it. So if, as long as you can read and uh, the, the, you're old enough. Also, um, how do you, like, keep a straight face? Is there any kind of secret to it, or is it just like you got to keep <laughs> I it? didn't realize I was capable of keeping a straight face. <laughs> I, I, I uh, yeah, I, 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 I mean, you mean when you're acting? Yeah. Uh, well, okay, I'm in Endangered Species with Sam Vincent and Tabitha St. Germain. It's coming out soon. It is the funniest script I have ever. These scripts are hilarious. And when we're acting, sometimes we'll crack each other up, but the microphones are very sensitive. So you just got to sort of, they, you know, you don't have to keep straight face. You just can't, can't make a noise, a laughter noise. Um, but yeah, no, the, the, uh, the object is to crack each other up. That's, that's, that's the goal. That's the goal. Thanks very much. Um, I noticed earlier that you said that you're like a collector of mics and everything like that. Yep. Um, I'm actually into like MXL mics right now, but I was wondering if you had any particular like brand preference or anything. Uh, yeah, the, Se the Sennheiser 416 shotgun mic is my very favorite. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, about 1600, 1400 bucks or something oh, wow. like that. And, and I'm getting in trouble because I'm late for my, I'm running out of time. Okay, uh, no, 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 wait, I, I feel bad about this. Um, 
Okay, maybe I should. Lightning round. Okay, lightning round. I'm really sorry. I want to hit every single one. They're not going to be too upset at me if I'm like a couple of minutes late. No, he's going to come and get my autograph anyway. Are you going to come and get my autograph? You're not going to get my autograph. One person. There, I got one. <laughs> You're not, well, you know where I am. I'm here. So, <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, so um, I know a lot of voice actors, they, they, if their character has a singing role, they usually get another actor, to, yep. a singer, to sing for them. Yep. How beneficial would it be if you, could, if you learned to sing in your voices? Uh, I, again, this is, this is a, a, my tale of woe. I sang both parts for Flim and Flam with Daniel Ingram. Then I did the audition, and they only sent the audition, but they didn't send the singing and that singing I practiced for two weeks and it was gorgeous and everybody on MASH should make Daniel Ingram put that out into the world so they could hear because basically I was it was it sounded exactly like what Scott and Sam did what they did a great job doing what I did <laughs> <laughs> well, look at what we got here brother of mine it's the same in every town so uh, yeah it's very beneficial if you could do both it's like a, it's like a triple threat man it's like right. singing dancing juggling monkeys <laughs> uh, so yeah, it helps a lot. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, what do you do to protect your voice? Say, if you're doing Bobcat Goldplate, or you wake up one morning for an audition and you've got laryngitis or something. Well, I'm no, I'm probably a bad example because can you hear my voice? It, it was yeah. barely, it, this morning. I was like, uh, keep keep hydrated. Uh, you can. Um, uh, Sepacol lozenges, uh, they help uh, to numb if your voice is hurting. Lots of fluids, lots of warm water, lots of warm tea, um, things like that. You can also get um, glycerin. This is an opera singer's trick. Glycerin, it's over the counter. It's like basically like edible astro astroglide. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. It's like, it's, it's, it's got the same ingredients. And, uh, and you take uh, a teaspoon of that in, in three ounces of hot water and then put an ounce of cold water and gargle four or five times. And it super lubricates all of the, the folds in your larynx. So anyway, there you go. I can't tell if you're saying um, voice bunny or voice buddy. Voice bunny. Bunny. Yes. Like a rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bunny rabbit. I've never question, used that one. I've only used voice.com. When and you voice say cold call, do you mean really use a phone? Or do you mean email? <laughs> what? what? You were saying cold call. Send your stuff out, then cold, cold, cold call. Cold call. Oh, it like means out of the blue. Cold, yeah, on the phone? Yeah, on the phone. phone. Yeah, on the phone. You could do an email, too, but I would always let them hear your voice. That's all I need. Okay. Hey. Hi. Inspiring voice actor, I've been taking notes and all that stuff. But I was basically wondering, uh, for voice acting, is there any other activities you can do? Like, I've been doing a lot of improv and stuff like that. Is there yeah, any other that, stuff? Yeah, that helps. Like, yeah, like improv, besides improv in, as well? Anything to keep your acting chops up. Mm -hmm. That Keep doing it all. Keep doing it all. Until, yep. until, fake it till you make it, man. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm working towards producing. So, as a up-and-coming producer, uh, what, I'm trying to find out what pitfalls I might experience. Uh, trying to get money. <laughs> that's, that's it, really. It's okay. all about money. It's all about money. Cartoons are not about cartoons, people. I'm sorry to say it. It's all about merchandising and licensing. And it's, uh, this is the only, this is one of the rare cartoons where people back the idea behind the cartoon. And it, but when I found out that Bugs Bunny and the Warner Brothers show was, uh, was just about lunch boxes and underoos and coffee mugs and stuff, I was really disappointed. But I still love the, anim I still love animation and Mel Blanc is still my personal god. Uh, getting money, acquiring money, acquiring the rights to a good script. Uh, locating uh, the talent, but really it's all about uh, getting the money out of an investor. Making them believe your project. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Hire me in a show sometime. <laughs> Haley, first off, you rock. Uh, my big question is, uh, has there ever been a role that you really wanted, but for some odd reason you didn't get? Flim and Flam. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it really that. bugs me. It really bothers me. <laughs> but well, besides that. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think every role I don't get, it kind of pisses me off a little. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every role I don't get, I, I, I really wanted to be on, um, on uh, Tiny Toons. I didn't get that. Um, and, or Anim Animaniacs. I wanted to be on that, too. I didn't get that. So uh, all these things, there's lots of roles. Uh, I, 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 but but I've, I've been very lucky. I really wanted to get George of the Jungle, and I got it. Like, the roles that I really want, I really try for. And, I'm, and when I come in the room, it makes everybody very nervous because I have a very, because usually happy, happy Jolly Lee is now very, like, focused. Like, don't talk to me. I'm going to make money. <laughs> Daddy needs food. <laughs> so, yeah, there it is. That's it. Thanks. 
Well, is, but they're not going to be mad at me, are they? I, look what I'm doing for the convention. I'm teaching, teaching the world. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. I'm teaching the world. Okay. Okay. Lightning, right, lightning round. Lightning round. Okay. Okay. What if you live in a town where there isn't a voice acting coach? Uh, okay, ah, uh, good question. There is something called, uh, and, I, and it's, okay, I, uh, go to my website or go to me because actually everything that I'm teaching here, I go into more depth and it's about an hour intensive. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an on the thing and it's only $19.99. I'm shamelessly promoting myself because, because <laughs> it's, on, it's an online course and you can take it. You can go to, I think it's 78910.com. Uh, 78910.com, and then you can go to, you can email me at lee at fanbuilt.com, and I will forward you the link to it. And uh, it's much better and much more, uh, like this, I'm giving for free. But the 1999 one, the reason why I have to charge is because Tom Lee Music in Canada is co producing it and they want to make money. So, uh, of course. but uh, 1999 or $250 or $300 for a coach, right? And, and you have to do it for a long time. This is one hour. So that's what I would recommend. Go, you, there's online stuff all the time. Go to YouTube as well. YouTube has some great stuff. Thank you. Staving off the nervousness of an audition, how do? Uh, that's, again, like I said, uh, give an experience. Don't think about yourself. Think about them. Think about trying, to, trying your hardest. If, you're, if your goal is to make them laugh, then make them laugh. Give it as an experiential thing. That's what I say. Okay, thank yeah, you. You're welcome. How's it going, Lee? Very um, good. Uh, my question is, like, say you've, uh, like, a person like yourself have been doing this for years. Uh, what should one do if one experiences certain periods of, like, self-doubt? It's like, oh, God, I've been doing this for years. It's like, have I lost my touch and stuff like that? So how that should one deal with that? That happens with, every, with everybody. Everybody goes through that eventually. But, but inevitably, you've got to come from a place of self-worth. You've got you to believe that, that there's a reason for you to be here. And that, you know, everybody wakes up in the morning and has no clue why. Who's kidding? Right? No, anybody here know? Anyone here? Got an answer? Anybody? No, I didn't think so. So, so, so the, everybody has these, these fears. Everybody has this self-doubt. You just have to remember to... There, how many people here listen to D'Antward? <laughs> okay, how about... Okay, take down this name. Walkin... Tudor Jones, W-A-W-A-L-K-I-N-T-U-T-O-R, uh, or T-O-D-O-R, I don't know, T Tudor or Tudor, Jones, J-O-N-E-S, and, and that song is called World Champion. Listen to that every morning for a week. Yes, sir. Yes. It is my mantra. I love that song. I also like Deanne Twerd because I'm a bit of a rebel, so. Anyway, yes. Hey, my question is about a demo. Yes. It's, it's mainly about writing a demo because I've heard from many voice actors that the software demo has to be original, and I've always had a lot of trouble with that. I mean, you can't put imitations or something like that. So each time I'm trying to write something, I even, I even end up thinking that's not good enough and start from scratch, and I don't get anywhere. You got any trick for, uh, tricks for well, that? Well, you can ask somebody to help you write it. Uh, and, you know, I mean, that's a, the, go to your friends and say, hey, can you help me with this? I'm, I'm looking for something funny. You know, or, you, know you, you can use not original material, but it's better to use original material. You just gotta, if you're not a writer, ask a writer. Okay. If, so that's what I would recommend. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Once you get your sides from your agent, what is the process you use for developing the voice for your audition? Sometimes they'll come with a picture, mm -hmm. and it, you can see that they're short, fat, and squat, or tall and skinny, or whatever, and so you can sort of, and, and they'll sometimes say, voice quality like Christ Christopher Walken. And so everything sort of sounds like this. <laughs> You know, in the voice. So you can do it, say Christopher Walken. So it's got a, a vaguely Christopher Walken thing. I don't know, you know. And so you could, they'll, they'll have a breakdown. Uh, so that's one easy way. So you, you'll see a picture or they'll actually describe it in the, in the lines. Oh, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, can anybody be a voice actor? Because a lot of people, their voice just horrifies them, me included. Anybody can be a voice actor if you want to be a voice actor. I mean, not everybody can do it, though. I mean, some people just, like, some, some, some people I have taught, they want to be a voice actor, but I know that either they're just, they're, some people are just not cut out for it. And, it, and, and you've got to be honest with yourself. Listen to yourself. Listen to the sound of your voice. And then say, honestly to yourself, is this a voice that other people would want to hear? 
Is, is, this a, is this a voice that I feel confident? Because it's all about confidence. If, you, if you're confident and you study, you're fine. You can be, anybody can be a voice actor if you're confident and you study and you practice, practice, practice. Okay? Cool. Do you ever use your voices for evil, like telemarketers and all that? Do What's that? Do you ever use your voices for evil? Uh, and, and, no, I, I do pranks. I, I prank all my buddies, though. I always prank them up and pretend that I'm from the revenue agency. <laughs> anyway, cheers. Yeah. Hi, Lee. Hello. It's so nice to see you stateside, I finally. I know. But no, I, I, I just, this is a follow-up from our interview a little bit about yes, Manville. Yes, it's I'm great very to see excited. you in person. I know. I hope I get to have a, fully, a full interview with you later. I would love weekend. that. And um, so what was the official launch date of Fanville? Uh, well, the, the uh, unofficial launch date that we had... Well, I know if it's live now. It's, I don't know it's if been, it's today. It's been, it's, been, <laughs> it's been stop and start yeah. and stop and start uh, for a long time. Because I've been getting asked by a lot of people who are really excited about it. We, like, it, you know, cause we I've, still you know. haven't officially launched. Okay. Like, it's just that we've, you know, through... A, my, my designer accidentally turned the site on. Okay, and so, okay, and okay. so now people have been migrating there, oh, yeah. but there's still glitches. There's right. still like five significant glitches. We're still working out the bugs. It's going to be about a week or two, but, okay. but I, think, I think our login problems are fin fixed now. So you can log in, create, your, create your, your thing, your profile, and just watch it get better. I mean, and grow with, grow with us as we well, grow I with just, you. I would love to update people who have yeah, well, all you, been coming you, at yeah, you about they, they really want to be really yeah, interested. Yeah, I know if they want it, so if they, they, they can come now either to the front end, fanbuilt.com, and if they can't, log into the back end to the studio they can go to fanbuilt.com forward slash studio and then um about the app that you mentioned with the, with the wheel that you alluded yes, to. Yes, yeah, yeah. I know you're going to be talking about Fanbuilt more on Sunday. Yep. So, but yep. it, does that have to do with Fanbuilt? Uh, not really, no. Okay. No, no, that's a separate thing altogether. Okay, Fanbuilt Fan has that. its own app that I'm developing. <laughs> so I know it's a speed round, but I'd love to yeah, get back to you. Uh, well, let's do it. that. Right. Okay. Good to see you. Hello, Lee. Hi. Uh, having as big a list of voices as you have, uh, is there any voice that really stands out the most to you? Like any voice that you enjoy the most doing? Or? The voice I enjoy the most doing is the one that is paying me at that moment. <laughs> 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 like I really enjoy the, the, thing, the, the voice I'm using for uh, endangered species is the one that, I, that I'm really enjoying right now. But mm -hmm. I also have Pronto the Magnificent and Slug Terra. Because he's like this little ball man who's not afraid of anything except his own shadow. <laughs> so I love it because I love anything that's comedy and funny stuff. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, g'day, my name's Owen. G'day. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, does having a thick accent sort of impact learning other accents and dialects? Uh, if you can drop in and out of your accent, that's, that's the best. Because you won't be able to, if you can't drop your accent and the character has to sound American or mid-Atlantic or something, then that's going to hinder you, yeah, for sure. But that's why I say try, and, try not to do your accent. Use phonetics is a, is a good way, like write words out phonetically and keep practicing that way. And listen, listen, listen to everybody. So that's, there it is. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. Oh, okay. Now, um, you were talking about uh, different types of microphones, categories, and yep. one that you were, you had a long list of words and stuff, but at the end you said shotgun. Shotgun microphone. It's a long, it's a longer microphone and it's directional, so it really only picks up everything within, within the front of its sphere, not, not like an omnidirectional microphone, like this one I can sort of, no, this one I can talk right from here, but a shotgun mic, you can be, have to be sort of right here. Is that the it, It's a noise cancellation that device. Uh, so that you can be someplace where you don't want to hear the rest of the room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Last question. But Look at good. this. We did it. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, since I'm getting into voice acting and I'm interested in it, um, what I like to do is uh, I like to like take voices from characters that I like and try to practice it so that I can like uh, imitate them and like you know make it as my own. That's and great. People seem to like that. That's my great. My friends seem to like that. My girlfriend seems to like it. Like she really likes my Wesker impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I, well, you know, I, she likes it when I talk like this because not only is she a big Resident Evil fan, she's a, she's a big Resident Evil fan. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's great. It's like something you could do to put in your bag of tricks. I mean, a voice yeah, actor if, has If a bag I had some water, it would sound better. But yeah, uh, anyway, like, um, I don't want it to be like, I don't want to sound like, I don't want to be known as the guy who can do impressions. You know, I want it to take it a step further. There's a big further. market for that. Yeah, I want it to be a... a 
to take it a step further and like make it into like a, a quote unquote real voice, you know? Yeah, so, well, that's it's a good start though. That's to, to imitate people is that's how I started. So my question is, um, how do you pass the threshold from like an impression to a real voice, and how do you know that you've passed that threshold? Uh, when it sounds believable to you and when it makes you happy. That's all I can say. I mean, you just if you start with an impression of something and then change it slightly to make it your own, that's how you do it. You start with, a, you start with an archetype, like you do in Arnold Schwarzenegger or whatever, and then you take it and then just make it lighter or less German or something, or you place it in a different part of your throat. Okay. And that's, you know, or in the front of the mouth or in the back of the mouth, and make it your own that way. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Thank Tom. you very much. <laughs> right, okay, thank you guys very much. We did it. We got through all of them. Okay, I love you all. Go and follow me on Twitter. I'll be very, very hurt. And come to fanbuild.com or I'll be very, very hurt. And the fanbuild panel on Sunday. Because once you're going to use this to get an agent. So you send this out as, as an MP3 to go and find the agents in your area the ones that are reputable, go online and source them. Do some due diligence. Find out how, if they got a good reputation. Never take an agent that wants to take your money because they didn't do anything for you yet. And they shouldn't. The only time they should take money is 15% off of your money that you made off of your gigs. And that's it. So if they say, oh, there's a one-time uh, entrance fee of $100 to put you on our roster, they are Cheating and mean, spirited, evil. Do not. Sh they are. They are the flim and the flam. So. <laughs> okay. So once you get that, so you you send out the MP3 and then you cold call them. You say, "May I? Uh, I'm interested in getting into voiceovers. Can I? Can I send out my MP3? I've worked on this little thing. It's really kind of a dream, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Be polite, right? And then call them back in a week and say, "Have you? I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, budge. But uh, have you? Have you had a chance to maybe listen uh, to the tape, to the reel? <laughs> I'm so old. Oh, I'm so old. I'm so old. I'm so old." I look great for 72, though, right? <laughs> I uh, moisturize. <laughs> uh, I use oil of no way. <laughs> yes. Uh, so once you get... Hold on. Okay, that's just weird. Uh, <laughs> My friends are so evil. Lee Tokar! Hello, every pony. Oh, hello. Hello, every pony. How you doing? Okay, thanks. Thanks, dude. So. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. I wasn't expecting to have so many of you here. This is fantastic. Um, OK, so this is Voice Acting 101. I teach this sometimes, um, and it's been a pleasure to have a lot of great students that have ended up going on to get work in animation. Um, I'm sorry about the glasses. I'm, I'm very light sensitive, and I, so I just, just deal with it. Sorry. <laughs> it's OK. Thank you. Uh, thanks, man! <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. No, not. And it is. So I don't want to be back there. I'll just. So how many people want to be in voice acting? Look at all these future voice talents. Uh, how many people have done some voice work in the past? A couple of you. How many of you? How many have it paid? Like paid gigs? No, that's not, it's okay, that's okay. That's what, that's what you're here to learn. So, okay, first things first. Uh, you need to get a demo reel because that is your first audition. It's your first foot in the door. It's how you get an agent. It's how you get into the union. It's how you, you get your first gig, really. So, in my classes, I teach one class a week for a month, every other month, for uh, something called on-the-mic training for Michael Dangerfield. 
it's his class and I just come in, he's got people that come in and teach commercials and teach narration and I'm the person that's done so much animation. As, as he said, uh, um, Dude Brony said that I uh, have been, and I have been in over 6,000 episodes of animation. Uh, to, to let you know where you're getting your information from right now, this isn't me being, being braggy pants, but it'll help you feel confident that you're getting the information from somebody who actually does do good work. I'm in seven shows right now. Um, Endangered Species, which is the new um, Nerdcore and uh, Disney production. Max Steel, I'm in that. Um, I'm in a couple things that I'm not allowed to tell you because I'm signed away on non-disclosure agreements and they will hunt me down and kill me. Um, Johnny Test is coming back for season six and I play, I play bling, or season seven, and I play bling bling boy on that and the general and Speed McCool. Hey, I like your monkey. <laughs> and um, Albert, the uh, butler, and Mortimer Mouse, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And I was George of the Jungle, and Yakety Yak, and on and on and on. And anyway, so you're getting your information from somebody who is an actual working actor, so you can trust me when I tell you the information I'm about to disseminate to you. So first, get the demo reel, because that's your first audition, it's your first foot in the door. Here is... Anyway, <laughs> somebody's sending me racy pictures. <laughs> no, not that racy. It's PG. It's PG. It's actually, there's, it's a picture of, oh, well, so I'll show you later. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really ridiculous. Um, it's basically, basically, it's a Renaissance fart joke. Um, okay, that's all I, that's all I can say. Uh, okay, so... You get your demo reel, it should be, how many, if you can remember all this information, I'm gonna be pouring my head out to you, okay? So if you have pens and papers, you could take them out, because this is kind of a class. Uh, your demo reel should be no longer than two minutes, about a minute, minute and a half. It should consist of uh, at least four of your voices that show a range, unless you do just one voice very well then highlight that voice. Make it sound like a cartoon, because it is cartoon, it's an animation that you're trying to get into, right? So make it sound like a, a bit of animation. About a minute, minute and a half, two minutes maximum. Uh, you have 10 seconds off the top to wow the listener, to wow the casting agents, because that's where you're gonna be taking it and to your agents. So that means you have production value. Make it sound like a cartoon or an old-fashioned radio play. Put a little production in it, like make some sound effects. Basically, I do all of my stuff. I'm not fancy. I got garage band and I got great microphones. I spend all my money on microphones. I don't need to spend a lot of money on, on fancy you know, Pro Tools or anything like that. So I'm gonna give you the, the rough and dirty, trying to get the easiest way, cheapest way to get in. Um, so you got your demo reel and it, and it has, a, but make it, set it in a, in a situation where all your characters can interact, like a doctor's office or an elevator or someplace, someplace silly or some, you know, make it, make it funny. Do the writing, make it funny. Um, help each other. I have some of my students that aren't very good writers. I say, well, send it out to your, to your people and work on it together and they'll, they'll help you. Um, make it sound good. Uh, put some music bed on there, but don't make the music or the production overpower the sound of your voice. The voice is the most important thing. Okay, so if you could do like four or five characters and have them interact, fantastic. Uh, then, what, at the end you say, hi, my, I use your name obviously, Hang on a second. <laughs> um, I have a ridiculous group of friends. Um, uh, um, and they, they know I'm doing this right now and they're trying to crack me up in front of you. So <laughs> they're mean. Um, anyway, so at the end, what I do, and I tell all my kids, I say, uh, hi, my name is Lee Toker. This is a small example of some of my voices and I can be reached at, and then give your number. This will change eventually. So this is your first demo tape. Your first demo tape, what's a tape? <laughs> I catch myself on that all the time, really. Yes, your demo reel, yes. This is your first demo eight track tape. <laughs> um, yes, demo, yes, exactly, a demo mixtape. <laughs> Funny. Um, that would be kind of old school if you like, gave out a cassette. So, and, and, the, and then the casting agent's like, what, what is this? Like, oh yeah, all the kids are doing it, man. Aren't, oh, you're so uncool. What, what? 
uh, whatevs. <laughs> An actual record. That'd be awesome. That's old school. That stuff right there. Oh, yeah. Here's my vinyl. Uh, anyway, now why you're going to change it later is because you're not just because you're going to get better. 